Alford. And the second round of the Riedel Trophy draw thrown up for chance for the second division sides to tackle the big guns. Uh, Keithley there, I think, uh, confident of testing Halifax. And in London, the Crusaders certainly playing well enough to tackle Featherstone Rovers. Holders Wigan travel to Cumbria without a fire and Sean Edwards. And last night's result there at uh, Dewsbury, Dewsbury 6, St Helens uh, 20. And uh, plenty of effort from the leading amateur sides who are included in the new style first round draw along with the second division clubs and two French clubs. Carcassonne having a very tough battle there at uh, Carlisle. And Saint Esteve going down quite easily to London Crusaders who are in good form at the moment. Happy crowd there, braving the elements here in uh, Manchester. The rain fairly tippling down, but not uh, stopped many lead supporters from travelling over the Pennines and uh, braving the traffic hold-ups and the weather. And this is what they're all aiming for, the Regal Trophy itself. The final schedule to be played on January the 22nd and to be shown before our grandstand cameras. And the two assistant uh, coaches, uh, both confident when they spoke to Richard uh, Duckingfield, Paul Fletcher and Howard Cartwright of Leeds and Salford. Yes, we've had a lot of injuries, um, obviously losing Gary Schofield and Anne is a, a great blow, but we're confident with today's result, we'll get a result today. We know Leeds uh, are a very big club, we know they've got some very, very, very big name players, but that doesn't affect us really. We, we try to go out and play the jerseys irrespective of who's in them. We started off like an house on fire and uh, we've had, as it happens, we've had three weeks off now and we've, 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 we've really worked hard in training and um, we've tried to cut out the mistakes. Well, if, if you look at the form book, if you're a betting man, you wouldn't bet money. But uh, we believe um, that we have the players that, that can win any game. So today we're looking forward to a win. I would definitely say we will win today. I think uh, both of them looking forward to a win. Salford have progressed past round two just twice in recent years and they had the misfortune to fall victim to the visitors in the semi-final at Bradford, losing by 22 points to 15 points back there in 92. And Leeds, the success hardly matched their heavy spending outlay in recent years falling at the first hurdle on four occasions and they'll certainly want to make amends for that crushing 24-0 defeat by witness in the final two seasons ago. At least history favours Leeds, uh, a trophy final win by Leeds over Salford in those four victories 21 years ago. And I think uh, the weather, Joe, is going to be a crucial part in this match. Definitely, Ray. It's going to be slippy underfoot. And like I said earlier to you, the um, team that gets the better of it early on and settles down, gets used to the conditions, could come out on top at the end of the day. And this uh, Salford ground, uh, Joe, usually quite a heavy one. Yeah, it might cut off. It looks very good from where we're sitting at the moment. But I'm sure with the weather, that's the rain that's been put down overnight, it could be a big problem with it being cutting up later on. Uh, and it'll get worse. It'll only get worse. A lot depending there on people like uh, Gary Mercer, Neil Harmon, Alan Tate there with the the ball in uh, in his hands because uh, some of those uh, youngsters there, Jonathan Scales, but of course Richie Ayres, David Young for skipper for Salford. A lot of new faces here this afternoon. A lot of uh, problems caused by injury and flu. David Young with the the mascot, the big, powerful Welshman, and Kevin Iro with the Leeds equivalent, Jim Fallon from uh, Bath, Gary Mercer and Barry Stevenson. A lot will depend on the uh, likes of Mercer and this man, Richie Ayres and Neil Harmon. Phil Ford, tricky wingman, Paul Forber, very experienced uh, player indeed. And Ellery Hanley did some training this week with the side, the injured man. The weather, the determining factor. But the pitch, 
quite uh, a lot of grass on. Whether I think these players uh, will probably slip a little bit, Joe. Definitely, definitely. That the, both teams were out before the match, checking the conditions, uh, obviously testing the uh, underfooting for the size of the studs they were going to use today. And the two uh, skippers, David Young, the Salford skipper, powerful Welsh prop, uh, done well since his arrival from uh, Leeds, and uh, Kevin Iro stepping into the captaincy role in place of the injured Ellery Hanley for Leeds. Two big men. And Robin Whitfield just wishing David Young a good game. One of the few ex-professional players in the uh, refereeing ranks. Robin Whitfield, 14 seasons as a top-grade referee. And he, well, he's just allowing the young lady to toss the coin. <laughs> well, it must have stuck up on its end. She's having another go. Ready, steady, go. She'll remember this, or at least her mum will, for a long time to come. And it's come down tails. And a little memento. A coin for the little lady and a photograph for the album in future years. So Robin Whitfield getting everyone in a happy, pleasant mood. And the Salford side, as I say, two ex lead stars in the ranks, Young and Ford, especially keen to do well. But one late change, Tex Evans drops out with Flu, and Jason Critchley moves across to the wing. Leeds, no Hanley, no Schofield, no Gregory in that lineup, injuries. Forcing Leeds coach Doug Long to rely on teenagers Scale, Stevens and Basilakopoulos. But Craig Innes, out recently with a foot injury, returns to the substitutes bench. And we understand that uh, coach for Leeds, Doug Lawton, who's uh, aggravated an old long-standing knee injury, coupled with a little bout of flu, is watching and listening to us in bed. So we wish him a speedy recovery. No doubt, I think the best recovery, Joe, would be a win for Leeds, wouldn't it? Yes, that's what they want. They want to progress to the second round of this trophy and it's a cure for anybody. Leeds wanting to bring this ball away very early, using Jim Fallon there, the big bath wing, and now and Neil Harmon. Scott. Signed from Workington earlier this season. Gareth Stevens at number seven. Son of the former Great Britain player, Gary Stevens. The same name. Alan Tate looking to establish a position straight away. Gary Jack covering. Jack sensibly allowing that ball to roll out before he picked it up. Jason Critchley, normally a centre here, ex-witness player, number two for Salford. Both sides, Joe, trying to establish uh, territorial advantage. It's the platform they're both looking for here, leads in very well then, with a quick play of the balls, moving the ball down the field, and then Alan Tate with a kick into the corner. That's exactly what um, Elry Hanley will have been telling him this week to do, and he established it well. And uh, Mr Whitfield, I think, just wants uh, a cloth to uh, wipe Holly Maskell's face, whilst Peter Williams here, the former Oral player, waits to kick to touch. The players, I think, uh, already having trouble with these conditions. Colin Maskell making a return to the Leeds first team, first time this season. Look up. And Whitfield... Youngster, Jonathan Scales there, a knock-on. It wasn't the best of kicks by uh, Peter Williams, uh, Joe. Well, that was the lead off for Salford. Uh, the conditions played the part right early on there. Uh, Peter Williams kicked the ball, sliced off the side of his foot, and only a knock-on stopped Lee from getting the ball. Down to Jack. Oh, a good run there to, to Burkett. Burkett only coming in this morning, a late entry in the centre position. Reed. £5,000 bargain buy from uh, Wigan. Williams again, a wild pass picked up well by uh, by Jack to Tauro, the uh, 
the former manly player in Sydney, Australia. Burkitt again to Phil Ford, ex Leeds player. And current Welsh international wing, Phil Ford. tourist in uh, 91 progressing well that's that's a sound sensible kick by Sean Brown Fallon's got it but uh, it's dead it'll be a dropout excellent pressure put on there Ray they know the conditions are bad we've mentioned it a couple of times already and that's exactly what they wanted a high kick putting pressure on the fullback and the winger had to knock it dead a combination of the uh, wind and the rain proving difficult there for Leeds in uh, in defence. Brown again giving that uh, sharp pass on oh, a lovely run there by Burgess. But good tackle, excellent tackle by Richard, but it's uh, Salford on the attack. To Brown, to Reed, looks for the half break, can't find it. Good tackle by the youngster there. Gary Jack probing. Mark Lee at number nine there for Salford, looking to direct play, he does, with a long pass to Sean Brown, Tauro showing a good uh, feat of strength there, just ten metres from this line, Paul Former, experienced forward, 11 seasons with St Helens, this number 11, Former, Brown again, looks for the... Uh, the drop goal but well picked up this time by uh, oh he picked it up well but he dropped it in the tackle you think it's nerves with this youngster uh, Joe possibly John Scales uh, had the ball he collected it well from uh, the charge down from the from the drop goal uh, but there's a good tackle put in here by Andy Burgess and just the ball went to the ground and a big difference there in, uh, in weight and we can see from that to uh, First scrum, Burkitt, back to Reed again, cuts inside. Tremendous pressure on Leeds at the moment. Good opening by Salford, good fluent rugby. David Young didn't have a happy time at Headingley, much better here at the Willows. Lee, the dummy, and he's through there. Good dummy by number nine, Mark Lee. He's been dropped in recent weeks by Gary, uh, by Gary Jack. He's come back to prove himself. Spotted the gap around that rock area. And he's in for his first try of the season. Number nine, Mark Lee for Salford. Four points to nil for Salford. Salford had applied the pressure there, kept it on the lead side. Something had to give in the end. Mark Lee wanted to prove his point back in the side. Spots the gap, throws the dummy. Power and strength force him over the line. A great start for Salford. You've got to know exactly what you're doing, and Lee does, the little dummy, and that strength that a hooker needs as well. Four points. Martin Burkitt. Risington amateur rugby league club a few years ago, not with the most uh, difficult kicks, but a tricky wind to judge. He does. Two points. Salford in the lead, six minutes gone, six nil. Youngster, Mark Lee, the try scorer. And already Craig Innes, number 14, stripping off, looking to come on. He's been uh, out recently with a foot injury and again a late call up this morning. Former Auckland player, Craig Innes. And 
uh, Richard Duckingfield down there on the bench. Yes, Ray, the news of Simon Irving is that he's gone straight to the dressing room. He's got a stud mark below one of his knees. It's a bad cut and he needs some stitches. And that's about it, Ray. Salford then just uh, consolidating that position. Paul Forber likes the rough and tumble. Forber. Taro. Salford keeping it tight, Joe. They are, yes. There's two teams here with great athletes. And two teams that know how to play football. I think this game will be decided by the team that wants to win it the most. And that's at the, at the moment seems to be Salford. Testing Alan Tate here, one of the experienced players in these ranks who uh, really have to get a grip of the game and uh, look after youngsters like this uh, number five here from Gosford, just 18 years of age, Jonathan Scales, only signed in April this year. That's a strong run and a determined run from Neil Harmon. That's the sort of forward play Leeds coach Doug Lawton will be looking for. And another one from Richie Ayres. Good pass, but no. The pass was perfectly executed. The chance was there, but Kevin Iroh overran the ball. Richie Ayres ran strong there, ran well. He knew when he made this half of rate that Kevin Iroh on his outside. Unfortunately, just overran him slightly. The pass was forward. Salford then, in possession. Burkett in the, uh, the thick of things at the moment. Reed back to Phil Ford. He weaves and he dances in midfield and he loses the ball. Play on, says Mr. Whitfield. It went back. Not a knock on. Well picked up by Mark Lee. Burgess to Peter Williams. What a solid tackle by number two there, Jim Fallon. And James Lowe's at number six. The, uh, Usually the hooker for Leeds playing at standoff. Forber. The action hotting up there in the middle now with these forwards. Lee, good ball to Reed. Lee again. To Brown. Salford did exactly what they wanted there, they, they brought the ball up well out of their own half, strong wins from the forwards, kicked out into that corner towards Fallon's wing and then waited for Lees to make the mistake and that's just what they've done. Back to the half back past the ball, I thought went a little bit behind but the referee ruled the knock on, scrum Salford's ball. Reed, Williams, Burkett and Gary Jack coming in the line. Craig Innes, Richley, more used to being in midfield, normally a centre. Well, lot conditions are bad, Ray, I've been impressed with the way Salford are prepared to use this ball. Tauro proving a difficult customer to put down. I spoke to Jerry Jack a couple of weeks ago, he told me he was one to watch out for. It's Salford again, putting it across. Peter Williams deciding to switch the point of attack. Reed, Young. And the fifth tackle. Mark Lee looks for the drop goal, but doesn't find it. I'm surprised that uh, Gary Jack dropped this, uh, this lad down. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe it's proved, it's proven his point today. He's come back into the team and he's started the game exceptionally well. Leeds yet to really mount an attack. Gary Mercer. Wants to keep it uh, going to James Lowe's, to Richie Ayres. One forward with real pace, this uh, Great Britain international. 
former witness player, but uh, had a spot of flu and the possession already there, Joe. 78% to Salford. That's indicative of how the game's progressed, isn't it? Yes, we've seen Salford really pin leads down in this half. Um, it's a platform we talked about that both teams wanted to build. Salford have done it so far. Paddy Jack. Jason Critchley coming in midfield. Interesting to see the number of wings who now come in midfield and play a full 13-man game. Lee using that blind side to good effect and Paul Farber running on the ball well there. Gained a good 10 yards. To Burgess. Burkett, Finchley, kept the play going, what a knock on, Brown, the little grubber kick, it's a tester for Alan Tate, he wants that two ball in his hands quickly and he's tackled behind the line. That was great play by Sean Brown, the forwards had worked well driving it, they have given the ball a little bit of earth through the backs, Came to the last tackle and Sean Brown put it in the in goal and then followed it up, as you see now, with a great tackle to pin Alan Tate in his own in goal area. Superb work. And when you're caught in your in goal area, the dropout beneath the posts. Picked up by Burgess. Using Jack as a dummy. Mark Lee signalling that he wants Sir Forber on his blind side and Paul Forber relishing it, relishing the battle. 29 years of age, Paul Forber and O'Connor. Former Barla Tourist in 91, ex witness Tigers amateur. Brown to Reed to Jack. Pitchley again. It seems to me they're moving this ball to Jason Critchley quite a bit. Any particular reason, Joe? Well, he's been playing well in recent weeks. Uh, he's been playing exceptionally well, and although he's switched to the wing position, they know that he's very dangerous, and they'll get the ball to him as often as possible, I'm sure. Get the tackle. Sean Brown again. Too much pressure behind the ball. Alan Tate just allowing that kick from Sean Brown to roll dead and relief for Leeds. 15 minutes gone, Salford 6, Leeds nil. James Lowe's bringing uh, Alan Tate in. And really the wrong position for a full-back to be coming in there. The forward should be taking this ball away for Leeds. Here's one now, Mercer, and it's a good break, straight down the middle, strides away, Gary Mercer. That's the sort of spirit needed by this uh, lead side. Stevens now, out to Lowe's, to Kevin Iro. Fallon, play on, says uh, Mr Whitfield. Gary Jackson beneath it. And a good catch by the Aussie. Burkett. Salford using these two prop forwards, David Young here and O'Connor. And Forber, second row, gaining a lot of ground. Another one, Tauro, appears for the high tackle, but I think uh, caught by the collar. Sean Brown again. Sense Forber. Oh, Salford at the moment. Brown, the man who's controlling things. Alan Tate's underneath. Oh, well picked up there by Scales. He's only got Jack to beat. He does, he beats Jack. This is a superb run by this youngster. Jonathan Scales, but good cover tackling. Tremendous cover tackling there by the Salford defence. Phil Ford, but a good run by the youngster. 
and Phil Ford hurt himself in that tackle, but it was a try-saving tackle. His skipper David Young got across somehow as well. That was excellent work by, by Phil Ford coming across the back. John Scales, a break down the wing, beating Gary Jack on the inside, stepped in. Like all good wingers, Phil Ford had covered across and, as you say, a try-saving tackle. And Salford just holding the ball here, sackling themselves after that to shot down the left wing. <laughs> Trying to settle themselves. The bomb goes up there, we saw the bomb go up. High kick, John Scales it was who picked the ball up after it had bounced off Alan Tate. Acres of space down the sideline. Gareth Stevens in at scrum half in place of the very experienced Andy Gregory. Richie Ayres moves that ball out wide to Jim Fallon. Fallon evades forward, keeps it going but uh, in touch. Into Williams, good cover. And Gary Mercer beginning to have an impact on this game now, the very speedy Kiwi. Yes, he's started to run strong. It's the direction, I think, that leads are missing a little bit. They have key players out, experienced players, and players who usually organise things. And that, at the moment, seems to be what leads are missing. <laughs> it's at half-back these days where a game's won or lost, Joe, isn't it? You need a strong half-back, one that can also play skillfully, but also bring his forwards onto the ball and organise things behind play. That's, that's the main job now of a, a half-back. Bobber. David Young, as I said, didn't settle too well at uh, Heading when he first came from Rugby Union. Simon Irving warming up, obviously had that uh, cut attended to. Brown again, puts a punishing kick in on the uh, Alan Tate. And Tate caught there by Tauro. Kevin Iro. Skipper for the day. Stevens. Just 19 years of age, this uh, scrum half. Cheers, did well to get that uh, pass out of there. Vasilikopoulos, just 17 years of age. Ex Hull. Schoolboy. Lowe's. The long ball to Iro. That was good defence by Peter Williams. He read that ball was going out wide to Iro. Picked him up well. Good tackle. It's in no man's land. Well read by Gary Jack. Interesting uh, player coach, Gary Jack. You don't see many player coaches in the games these days, Joe. No, it can be a good thing. It can also be a bad thing, Ray. Although you're on the field and you have as it was, hands-on. You don't get the view that a normal coach would have sitting away in the stand. You can't see those gaps because you're on the field. That can be a difficult time. Penalty against uh, Colin Maskell and uh, Scott. Taking the ball up strongly, a little bit high. Colin went, you know, it was above the ball. It was definitely a neck tackle and penalty resulting. Robin Whitfield, the referee, just... Uh, Instructing Colin Maskell to keep it down. And Robin Whitfield also seeking uh, Craig Innes, number 14, to go off the field as Simon Irving comes in. Ten minutes there in the blood bin. Young. Play on, says uh, Mr. Whitfield, and it's Lee playing it on. Salford perhaps moving the ball around a little bit too quickly here, would have been as well just to have uh, regrouped, but uh, Berkett and Lee keep it moving on that blind side to Gary Jack. 
corner. Well, Ray, you think it was a summer's day. You think it was a pre-season friendly, the way they throw the ball about Salford. No respect, but it's working so far. And Ellery Hanley there, possibly wishes he was on. But this is Salford's style of play, Joe, isn't it? Yeah, caution to the wind. They'll try and advance the ball in any way they can. Uh, they use the forwards well, and then, as you can see now, bring the backs into play with good deep passing. Two or three times they've tried to launch uh, Jason Quitsy down this right wing, but uh, he's been uh, well held. John Brown, the little grubber kick, he's chasing it and he could be there, but no, he's not. Good piece of play there by Simon Irving. A timely kick. Those are punishing kicks. Sean Brown, last tackle he gets the ball, attacks the line, has a look what's on, the little grubber kick through. And if it hadn't have been for that man getting back quickly there, it could have been another try for Salford. Alan Tate to drop out, and it's a, it's a long one, it's a high one, but it's well picked up by Gary Jack, former Australian test player. Into Williams. Tauro again. Just two or three games here at the Willows, this number 12. O'Connor, very direct, both props, this Terry O'Connor and uh, David Young here, number eight on the line side, good pass there from Liam Paul Farber's going for that there, and Paul Farber, he's been driving well all afternoon, and that's no more than he deserved. Doesn't score very often now, uh, Paul Farber, but when he does... It's effective. 10 0 now for Salford. Just 24 minutes gone. That ball was always on. I was going to be a try. They're going to switch it back to the blind. As you say, Paul Forbes doesn't score very often, but when a man comes on a ball at that speed, with that power and that size, very difficult to stop. And a great try for Salford there. Very good understanding, and the drive is what counts from Paul Forbes. Difficult kick out there. Martin Burkett. The wind swirling around here at the Willows. Need to judge that win. Just eight metres in. Just underneath the, the upright. And that's a good start for Salford, Joe. Excellent. That's the basis of, of you know of a good victory. They wanted to come out here early on and get it sorted out. They used the blind side very, very well here. A little bit of a run around, brought the ball onto it. And as I said, when Farber runs on the ball so well, spots the gap outside, caused by the run around play. And it's very difficult to stop a man of that size so close to the line. Lead still seeking to get a foothold in this uh, Salford uh, 20 metre area. O'Connor leading the charge with Taro. And quite some charge here, Joe, from these uh, Salford forwards. They've run strongly and they're running from depth, aren't they? Yeah, the whole pack of, uh, of Salford have been playing well. Uh, Sean Brown has been turning balls inside, bringing forwards on outside, and they're running straight and direct, as you say, and it's causing Leeds problems. Sitting cosily on the bench, the Salford assistant coach, Howard Cartwright. Howard, this is really going as you forecast, is it? Well, I told you before the game, Richard, that we will, would be playing adventurous rugby. We've tried to play it. It's difficult to stop Southwark playing well. They like to play with the ball, and that's exactly what they're doing. You've had all the possession so far, but there's just one or two risks involved, surely? There's always an element of risk in any game that you play, Richard. You should know that by now. There is a risk, but we are prepared to take them. We feel it's important to try and run leads around as much as we can. Thanks, Alan. That uh, 65 yards kick there from Sean Brown, putting uh, Leeds on the defensive again. Oh, 
Paul Forbes, number 11, the try scored into the tackling sticks as well. James Lowe's to Alan Tate. One man with pace who could rise above these conditions. Very heavy underground. Another man with pace, Richie Ayres. A penalty. To Leeds. Offside. That's the kind of play that, uh, that Leeds need to do. They play the ball faster, brought the man onto the ball in the in uh, the likes of uh, the forwards running down there. They had Gary, Gary Mercer bringing that speed, causing Salford to be offside and a penalty. Leeds have uh, been uh, training in uh, Landudno this week, trying to, uh, I think, take advantage of a little quiet there and the, the sea breezes. Uh, doesn't seem to have done much good at the moment. Holly Maskell and Harmon combining. Referee Robin Whitfield getting uh, Salford right back the full uh, 10 metres. Keep coming, he's shouting. James Lowe's, Richie Ayres. Ayres, number 12, and uh, Mercer and Craig Innes warming up again. Long pass to Tate, picked up. That's good instinctive handling from Wayne Reid there. The kick was put through. Before he knew what was happening, the ball was in his hand, but he managed to keep hold of it. Just ten minutes remaining in this uh, first half. And the Salford pack can be well pleased with themselves. Especially skipper here, David Young. There, just another powerful run, really coming from depth. David Young. Sean Brown again, a variety of kicks, raining down on Alan Tate, but uh, he's up to this one. But that little man, number seven, Sean Brown, is commanding this game, uh, Joe. He's putting the grubber kicks through, he's putting the high kicks on too, isn't he? Yeah, but all kicks resulted in pressure, and it's that, that's his plan to keep Leeds pinned down in their own half. And it's working very, very well at the moment. Simon Irving playing the ball to himself. Changes uh, coming up in the lead side, and that uh, Craig is back on. Colin Maskell will be the player to come off. That means that James, James Lowe's will go to number nine. Craig Innes, of course, has a foot injury which he got against Oldham. It's causing him some discomfort, but otherwise he's fully fit. Stevens looking to prize open a gap. He does pass in a couple of gets a beautiful pass out there to to Iro, and Iro's in for Leeds first points. That was a good combination, and Kevin Iroh running under the ball just at the right time. His third try of the season, a big, powerful Kiwi, and at last something for those Leeds fans to shout about. 10-4 to Salford, 31 minutes gone. Yeah, that was a lovely ball, drew the defender and put Kevin Iroh through on, the, on his inside shoulder. It was very hard to tackle on the other shoulder, and he, he came through well there, again at speed. And that's a captain's try to bring Leeds back into the game. It's something they definitely needed. And it's two youngsters who make uh, the try. The young scrum half for uh, Stevens and the loose uh, forward, only 17 years old, Vasilakopoulos. And Iro gratefully accepts for the four points. Simon Irving. Former Headingley player. Facing a fairly stiffish breeze. Ooh, it just swings into the side up right there. So, good reply and a classy reply, I think, there from Leeds. Ten points to six for Salford. Leeds are always capable of. of producing a try of this calibre and I think it's very important at the time of, uh, of the try just before half time you see the young scrum off Gary Stevens run to the line there uh, Vasikopoulos draws the, draws the full back Gary Jack and once again Kevin Iroh on his shoulder strength, pace and power all the way to the line Joe you can probably often tell me these days how many times do we see a player knock on straight from the kickoff? Do people relax after a try? Well, I'm not sure what it is, Ray, but there's nothing more certain to make a coach go grey 
earlier than he should do. It's mistakes like that, you just score the try, you need to retain the ball. And it's not what's wanted. Jason Critchley just couldn't quite uh, hold the ball. You mentioned earlier, Joe, that Salford were throwing this ball around as if it was a summer's day. Once again, possibly, should have held that ball and uh, played for position. I think it's been a tactic to get the ball wide quickly. If there's a turnover at all by Leeds, then Salford want to get out, to the, particularly to this wing, to Jason Critchley. But, you know, with the conditions as they are, maybe it was a little bit careless there and, and should have held on to the ball. And yet we can see from those handling headers that, in fact, it's Leeds who have been causing the most problems. Kevin Iro now coming into this game, the sort of powerful run that he can make, Irving, he looks for support on the outside, there's no one there. Does well just simply to hold on the ball, keep the momentum going, James Lowe's to Stevens now, to Vasakopoulos, cuts inside, the wrong option, picked up easily by Taro. Neil Harmon, and that try put a little spirit into this Leeds outfit. Using the short side themselves now, Richie Ayres. Certainly plenty of pace in this uh, Leeds pack if uh, these halves. Uh, Gareth Stevens uh, can find the gaps. Mark Lee did well there to pick that ball up. Leeds seem to have settled down a little bit into the game now. They're getting more of the rhythm together. They're bringing the forwards on well. And it's nice to see them down in Salford's half for change. O'Connor. Neat sidestep there for a big uh, prop. Reed to Burkett. Salford dominating Nergio. Yes, they've had a lot of the ball. You mentioned Sean Brown's kicks have been the telling factor. He's been putting the ball down deep in the leads half of the field, and they've struggled really to get back and attack Salford. Brown again. Jim Fallon well underneath her. Oh, he makes a break. He recovered well from that kick. Jim Fallon, former Bath and England B wing. Just five minutes left in this first half. Leeds trying to mount a challenge. Stevens coming more and more into the game now. Innes to Richie Ayres. That's a good, another good break by Richie Ayres. Play on, says uh, Mr Whitfield. Good advantage played there. Well dropped down by Burgess. Gary Jack still keeps play going. Phil Ford runs at the heart of this Leeds defence. David Young. Well picked up, Vasilakopoulos, another good pass to Iro. Still keeps going, Kevin Iro. What a knock on. A pity there for Kevin Iro, who's looking to put a little grubber kick to the corner, I think, Joe. I think he was trying to kick for the wing there, yes. It was, it was a bit of an unfortunate handling error. Obviously, turnovers left, right and centre here, but Kevin, Kevin gets the ball, he's looking to put the kick through, the tackle from behind, and just puts the ball. Alfred, Burgess, but a sense of determination in this Leeds pack now, moving in, much uh, sharper to the tackle, good tackle there by James Lowe's, number six, Tauro, working up ahead of steam, this, uh, this Australian, he's all action there, uh, Joe. Oh, the whole Salford pack are playing well, they're running hard, running straight. Leeds have come back into the game in the last 10 minutes a little bit and it's been through Kevin Iroh, not through the forwards. Palmer gave a beautiful pass out there to, uh, to Wayne Reid. But a good tackle. It's still Salford on the attack and Sean Brown, the grubber kick. Jim Fallon electing to pick up the ball. Oh, and a good sidestep there, Fallon coming down the middle. He's got support on the outside here with Gary Mercer. Mercer's got Irving. Scales is there. Well, this could have been contender for a try of the season if ball had gone to hand. Leeds throwing the ball about, making a break from inside their own half. 
with three quarters length of the field, but that last pass again that could have resulted in a try goes to ground and Salford once again retain possession. Superb entertainment though for the fans who have braved the brave this driving rain. All action from both sides. Moving this ball from side to side. Palmer looking for an opening. He finds Tauro. Lee. Young again. Good play by the Salford forwards. Short passing in support. Just two minutes left in this first half. Lee again using that blind side to Peter Williams. It's in touch. Peter Williams realised it was the last tackle there. The difference between the two sides is that Salford are holding the ball for the full five tackles. That's putting pressure on Leeds. In the long term, it'll tie them because of the amount of tackling they're doing. But also, when Leeds do get the ball, eventually from the kicks, from the likes of Sean Brown, then they seem to be dropping it on first and second tackle. Ray Guinness moved into the uh, standoff position, number 14, substitute. Blows again, bringing on uh, Neil Harmon, running with uh, some real fire, Neil Harmon, former Warrington prop forward. Again, another of coach uh, Doug Lawton's uh, signings in the past 12 months. Gary Mercer, another former Warrington star. Oh, now then, Mercer, he used to be a centre and the wing. He can go the full length, but not this time. Superb cover tackle there by the former Aussie Test player, Gary Jack. But it's Leeds still in possession. Iro to Stevens, the long pass to Innes. Vasilakopoulos, he's got that good ball out again to Irving. Oh, he's delayed, but he's delayed sufficiently to get himself pushed into touch. A fatal delay there, I think. Scales was on the outside. Possibly a try gone begging. Well, when Simon Irving gets this ball, as you say, it delays and delays. And in this kind of weather, if he'd have made his mind up and put his head down and gone for the line, I think he could have gone over for the try there. We can see here, Joe, he's trying to uh, hold up uh, Burkett there. He stops, he stops. But I think Scales was wanting that ball. When he decides to go, it's too late, isn't it? It is. Definitely. John Scales came on the inside eventually. He was waiting for the ball on the wing and, and eventually came inside. Whichever the option would have been, if he'd have put his head down and gone for the line, I think he would have scored. Gary Jack taking the ball himself. Good captaincy there. Number one. O'Connor. But a good ten minutes from Leeds have hit back at Salford. Jason Critchley looking for the ball, but Lee keeping it going. Sean Brown again to Burgess, straightens up the line. I like the way these Salford forwards are straightening up play. Yes, yeah, Salford lost their last uh, five matches and just four points in uh, Division 1, but certainly they're not playing like that this afternoon. Ten points to six, leading at uh, half-time. 21 minutes possession, Joe. Quite a telling factor. That's been the big thing in the first half. Salford have played well, they've had the ball and kept the ball for those five tackles, and that's what's needed, especially in conditions when, when it's like this, when it's raining. You have to hold the ball if you want to do well. And a try, Joe, that could possibly count very, very dearly for uh, Leeds. The try that never was. Well, I'm sure at half-time they'd have thought that this should have been four points put on the board. Simon Irvin, as we mentioned, hanging off, hanging off, throws the dummy. Then it goes for the corner only at the last minute. If it had gone and made his mind up a little bit sooner, I'm sure he could have crossed for four points there. Underway for the second half. Jason Critchley, again, helping his forwards, just making that extra yard of uh, pace, Tell, and another man with pace, Burgess, the loose forward, having a good game, number 13 for Salford. Paul Forber, one of the try scorers in the first half. And Salford beginning as they finished off in that uh, second half, driving these props down the middle. David Young. Come on, 
Mark Lee pushing Jim Fallon and Alan Tate back Tate just uh, letting that ball roll most full backs uh, doing that these days allowing the ball to roll into touch because of course at the scrum here now leads head and ball and it's youngster number seven Gareth Stevens to feed the scrum just 19 years of age a Great Britain under 21 playing a good drive there by the uh, the Salford uh, pack but it's Jim Fallon coming away well putting one or two strong runs in this uh, Basil Akopoulos number 13 Jonathan Scales perhaps a little uh, inexperienced Sergio it was a good run wasn't it but the pass really was never on possibly possibly I think you know obviously at half time Gary Jack in the Salford dressing room would have said let's have more of the same let's play five tackles out kick Lees into their own corners and let them work out and as it's proved the case in the first half, they made mistakes again. Reed and uh, the tackles made by Leeds, that shows the pressure on that Leeds line. Yeah, you know, Salford have obviously had a lot more of the ball, they've had the possession and making Leeds defend and defend an awful lot more than they have. That'll tie them later on and we might see you know, a few points because of that going Salford's way later on in the game. And it's been big powerful men like O'Connor that Leeds have been tackling, number 10 for Salford. Brown again, moving that ball out to Reed. Reed puts it back inside to Burkett. Switching the point of attack, moving it out to the right, cutting across at angles. David Young driving for that to line. The Salford crowd roaring them on, leading by ten points to six. An attempt at a drop goal from Brown, and he gets it. Always worth a drop goal in those uh, circumstances. A confidence booster from uh, Sean Brown, former Lee East amateur player. Edges Salford out to 11-6. It was Mark Lee that worked his forwards towards the post. Obviously this is a set plan to get Leeds down in their own half and have a go at the drop goal. One point it could prove vital at the end of the game. Critchley always seems to be coming away with the, the ball from uh, near the Salford line. Ball for back. A surprise signing by uh, Salford for St Helens 15 months ago. And another good signing by, by Salford, number 10, Terry O'Connor, ex Witness Tigers. Burgess. Mark Lee to Tauro. Short, galloping stride, this boy from uh, Manly. Number 12, Mark Tauro. Alan Tate. A good run by Alan Tate there. He uh, brought the ball away 20 metres. <laughs> I don't know what he's complaining about, Joe. It was a knock-on, wasn't it? Yeah, he just took his eye off the ball. And, you know, he was concentrated on the tackle rather than holding on to the ball. You have to hold on to this ball in these conditions in your own 22. You've got to keep hold of it. And once again, you see Salford now in Leeds half with possession. And using Gary Jack well on that blind side, looking to bring Critchley inside. He does do so. Salford still hitting Leeds down the middle. Chris Tauro here driving in 10 metres now from this Leeds line. O'Connor. I wouldn't be surprised at all, Ray, if they don't go for the drop goal here. They want to come away from this Leeds line with at least some points. Well spotted there by Craig Innes. Craig Innes was looking for the run around movements. Sean Brown to Phil Ford to Gary Jack a little chip kick well I think uh, Gary Jack was possibly in front but no try good little uh, chip kick by Jason Critchley there 
If the ball goes wide, Critchley takes on the defence and then at the last gasp, puts a little kick through. Possibly for himself, possibly for Gary Jack. But as you say, I think Gary Jack was just a little bit in front of it there. Got the ball, scooped away by uh, Scales. Tauro. Runs it full force into the Leeds defence, but uh, Leeds well up to it. Salford, high point gap. One or two of the Leeds fans are a little bit upset there at the tackle. Another good run by Paul Forbert, and Forbert able to stand up in the tackle, looking to offload that ball. Mark Lee. Very nice one-handed pass back to O'Connor. O'Connor again to Burgess. Burgess on the outside to Burkitt. Oh, he's got me. Critchley in the corner and he beats him. Yes! Critchley goes in at the corner. The passing was crisp. Superb handling movement to the right there. And that former witness lad, Jason Critchley, in for his eighth try of the season. And he took it well. He had some time to go, he had some space to make up, but he got there. Salford are trying to get this ball onto Critchley's wing all afternoon. Martin Burkerty runs out the line, gives it an early ball to Critchley, who with the strength and power goes for the corner. A great four points early in the second half. And it was that good one-handed pass that released men on this outside and Salford when they're stretching this Leeds cover like that Burkitt there, times his pass well Critch has still got a lot to do but he does it we'll see the quick hands now this comes across the line it was John Scales really that was left in no man's land here had to go to Martin Burkitt and he was just left with a little bit too much to cover across and take Critchley in the corner Very difficult kick for Martin Burkett. No let up in the rain. Difficult underfoot. No points. So Salford in the lead now by 15 points to six and just eight minutes gone in the second half. The rain on pitch side is getting heavier than it was, so the points on the board at this stage of the game are going to be absolutely vital. Leeds, of course, are all too well aware of the second half wobbles. They're nowhere strangers to that sort of thing. They went in at half time with their tails up, feeling if they continued to play as they were doing, the game was there to be won. But they didn't count with this revived Salford performance early in the second half. a lot of work this uh, boy David Young the uh, Salford skipper Joe yeah strong lad he, he runs hard runs straight direct 13 there as well Andy Burgess all the forwards all the Salford forwards are running hard and direct they're keeping the ball four or five tackles then relying on the kick from Sean Brown to pin the leads down in their own half good tactics and sound tactics that have caused Salford to score a few points Reed. And that's the conditions that these two sides are playing in. What a tribute to the handling of these two sides. Entertaining rugby, despite the appalling weather. Jim Fallon. One player who has looked uh, dangerous when in possession. For Leeds. Basil Akopoulos again. Only 17 years of age. This will be a very good experience for the youngster, Joe. Young. Not being driven back like that, it won't. He'd rather be going forward, I'm sure, like any forward with the ball, but that was great defence from Salford. Harmon. And Leeds certainly need to work up ahead of steam in this pack. They've got to establish themselves in that Salford 20 metre area. Playing all the rugby in this uh, half. And isn't uh, Ian Scott disappointed? More than disappointed. Me, he says. It won't matter. Well, this was well spotted by Robin Whitfield. The short pass to Ian Scott, just that fraction forward, where Robin was on the spot to see it. The water An old coach Actually, used to say to me, better to come too late than too early. The 
kick put Salford back on the attack O'Connor and not to 10 metres says the referee Whitfield a bad slip there by Leeds and a little debate in the Salford camp as to whether Burkitt should have an attempt at goal it's, they are appalling conditions though from which to to kick a goal and Paul Farber says no we'll go for a try and I'm going myself says Farber that was the right decision I think that it was a little bit far out to kick especially in these conditions and even if they don't score from this top penalty then they will keep the pressure on Reed trying to prise open another gap in that Leeds defence but a good tackle by uh, Garrett Stevens. Gary Jack going from that in half back position it's all Salford at the moment and good rugby from them O'Connor well held up there by Basil Akopoulos getting through a lot of work this youngster 17 year old for Leeds at loose forward and another good tackle still Salford Markley little drummer kick well covered and a good tackle by number 3 for Salford Martin Burke in Tempest Rain no need for this the ball was well picked up the tackle was correctly made Referee Whitfield and his two touch judges sorting it out quickly, thankfully. And I think he'll have a strong word with the with referee Whitfield. A player himself, he knows the passions, used to play with witness. He knows the passions that can be aroused. But he'll not let anyone overstep the mark. Simon Irving and Young and uh, Jason Critchley. <laughs> Mr Whitfield saying I'm in charge. Little kick goes through, again the pressure being put on. It was a good pick up by Simon Irving. Pitched, it was actually Martin Burke that came in late. You know, temper's getting a little bit afraid. It's frustration more than anything out there. I think the uh, problem caused you when uh, Martin Burke was getting up off the tackle with his hand pressing down on uh, Irving's face. Yes, but it's, it's, it's all to do with the pressure that Salford are placing on Leeds. They're getting frustrated, they know they can't score from their own half like this and they need to get some possession to get up into Salford's half. And just look at that, Joe, 14% for Leeds in possession. The amount of tackling they've had to do. That's staggering, that. We saw in the Test matches only last week and the week before when um, the Kiwis were losing a lot of ball, dropping a lot of ball just adds the pressure to it to Phil Ford dancing bubbling about keeps it going still to Sean Brown Sean Brown looks for support he gets it from Tauro Tauro the direct run down the middle he's lost the ball Gary Jack he, he almost thought he'd scored but uh, Mr Whitfield was on the spot there a quick decision Stevens brings Craig in his interplay. Real determination in this uh, Salford side and this tackling. Another good tackle there from uh, Andy Burgess. The crowd roaring them on. Vasilokopoulos. Gary Mercer. And this is what's needed from this, uh, this Leeds pack some direct straight running. Possibly some kicking into space, making Gary Jack run back. Good kick there by uh, Alan Tate. At least now gets Salford back in the 20 metre area. And this is where Leeds have got to be, Joe. It's the first time this half that it's happened. Uh, Leeds choose to, chose to kick a little bit earlier, though, caught Gary Jack on the words and turned him round. It was actually a very, very good kick. Bill Ford. Peter Williams to Sean Brown to Burkitt back to Wayne Reed David Young and I don't think uh, Salford would relish staying uh, too long down here they haven't been here so much for the match
using once again Sean Brown for the kick. Jim Fallon. Strong run by uh, Jim Fallon, but a good uh, chase again by the kicker, Sean Brown. Leeds trying to open it out now. And substitute there, uh, Gary Rose coming on for Ian Scott, would you believe it? Got married this morning, number 15, Gary Rose. Stevens, excellent run by Stevens and a superb pass to Alan Tate. He's going for the try and he gets it. Alan Tate has plenty of pace. He raced on that pass from young Stevens at precisely the right time. He shook the blow that the Leeds fans wanted. And the Yorkshiremen are back in the game. This try comes straight up the heart of the Salford defence. Gareth Stevens here makes a break off Rose's pass. Comes to the full back, and as you say, perfect time pass. Alan Tate on the inside, superb backing up, streaks away to go under the post. That's an excellent try for Leeds, and one they desperately needed to get back into this game. And the kick from Simon Irving is uh, successful, and so, despite all the uh, Salford uh, possession, that scoreline stands now just at 15 points to 12. And a very confident run from this uh, youngster, Stevens. The sidestep and then the pass, and not many people catch this Scotsman, Alan Tate. He can run. Excellent try. Straight up the middle, there. as I said, it was Rose, Gary Rose, who put the pass inside to Gareth Stevens. A little bit of a step, draws the full back. They're Alan Tate. Great support, great try. Interesting there, Joe. Leeds receiving uh, possession straight from the kickoff and kicking it immediately. Well, they want to spend a little bit more time in, in uh, Salford's half, obviously. They've just realised that if they get down here and maybe get the ball back off a mistake off a turnover, they could put a little bit of pressure on Leeds. Sorry, on Salford. O'Connor to Gary Jack. Peter Williams. And the other play, come on, mate. Reed. Young. High tackle whilst uh, Tyro puts his boot back on. A high tackle there. <laughs> Mr Whitfield says he's jumping up off the floor to hit him. But here we see it. Yeah, a little bit silly. Was definitely high around the head. In fact, the tackle has been creeping up aggressively throughout the game, and that was one of the first ones that Mr Whitfield's penalised. Marsden coming on for David Young. The penalty then putting uh, Salford back on the attack and attacking through the shape of Terry O'Connor. Sean Brown, Reed brings the substitute ex Rochdale Hornets. Marsden into the action. Reed, but cut through there by Peter Williams, he's got Gary Jack inside him, Basil Akopoulos holds Jack just a metre from the line, that was a good tackle by the youngster, but Salford spreading it about to Burgess, well in there Miley, lead substitute, Craig Innes. Craig Innes moved up exceptionally well then, spotted the danger was out wide after the break had been made, and shut down the Salford attack. Still putting pressure on the line, but well saved by Scales. And Leeds breathe again. But that was a good exhibition of tackling by the Yorkshire side, uh, Joe. And it had to be as well, Salford were pressing on the line. But once again, you see, Ray, they come up with this little kick, which although doesn't bring points, puts Leeds, causes them to drop out, and Salford will get the ball back and once again put Leeds under pressure. I get the feeling, Joe, that if Leeds could just maintain a themselves in this Salford half to have the pace in the likes of uh, you know Gary Mercer and the forwards to, to make a break. 
Well, with the, you said Mercer and I roll, they have players throughout the Leeds team that can attack and score from anywhere. But they do need that foundation, they do need that platform to work from. And what a game Paul Paul was having. Number 11 for Salford. Continuing to move the ball about, Bob Marsden. Slip passes back to Mark Lee. Burgess out to Burkett, he's got Critchley outside him again. Good cackle by Vasilakopoulos, but that's good support play by Mark Lee and the dummy. At number nine is Hooker, having a good return to the Salford ranks and spinning it from one side to the other. Sean Brown again. Back to Burgess. Still looks for support to Tauro. The pressure's on Lees as Tauro races through. Frantic defence here by Lees as Salford moving about Sean Brown. A slip by Marsden, well picked up by Alan Tate. I don't think Bob Marsden was expecting that ball. Just took his eye off for a set split second, that's all it needs for the ball to go to ground. from the lead skipper Iro Gary Mercer both teams Joe you would think this was a seven side contest the way they're throwing the ball around well they've no respect for the weather conditions they're certainly making a go of it and making a game of it what they're having to put up with James Lowe's Pitsy's got it covered and Richard uh, Webster about to make a debut Tauro leads now moving in to the tackle, much sharper, much stronger, Gary Rose, number 15. Reed. Sean Brown. That's a sensible kick, getting Salford back down to the other half, but to Alan Tate will want to bring the ball away as far as he can from that line. Now Leeds, Joe, will want to hold this six, won't they? That's right. They've, they've stepped the tempo up in the last ten minutes. They've attacked Salford and turned them around on a couple of occasions. And now they'll want to make this pressure pay now. Leeds still applying the pressure. Gary Mercer. The Kiwi second row. Paul Fletcher, Leeds assistant coach, this has been a tremendous game under the conditions, Paul, do you fancy your chances now? Pretty much so, we've just got to cut our mistakes and I still feel that the, the game's within our grasp. Salford have played terribly well, they've thrown the ball about and taken risks. Salford's controlled the ball very well, um, full marks to them. We've put the ball down in important positions, but I feel if we can cut that out we've still got the chance. You don't want the second half wobbles though? <laughs> no, we, we, I don't. <laughs> Thanks Paul. Scrum. And Richard Webster, the former Wales and British Lion Rugby Union star, coming on for his debut. And Joe, a rugby union forward, couldn't have a tougher baptism than this, could he? Not really. Conditions and also the scoreline being so close. But I'm sure he'll handle it very well. He's been in big pressure games before. And there's Webster, he wants the ball straight away in a good driving run from Richard Webster. That'll give him confidence. Just four Alliance games since his signing seven weeks ago. Reed. Both sides looking for that uh, vital try. Salford leading by 15 points to 12. Mark Lee to Marsden. 
Bob Marsden, number 14, always looking to get the ball away, looking for players in support. Sean Brown again, cries for a forward pass from the crowd, but turns to Whitfield, says no, Scales covers. But it could be a drop out beneath the post, sliding over the line. I think that leads a little unlucky there, I thought that was a forward pass there. But once again, puts a kick in, Sean Brown puts a pressure on Leeds. The drop out here now, resulting in Salford getting the ball and bringing it straight back at them. Just three point difference. Richard Webster again. Picked up a try in four Lions team outings. Mark Lee to Sean Brown, looking to open out play, the dummy, oh he's got Gary Jack alongside him, but a good cover tackle by number seven, Gary Stevens, having a good second half this uh, lead scrum half, but it's still Salford on the charge! Read again to Webster, will he make a dream debut and score? Gets the ball out well to Marsden, Mark Lee, the little dummy, the fifth tackle, three metres from the Leeds line. Obstruction! Yes, obstruction try by Mr Whitfield, given to Mark Lee. Awarded by Mr Whitfield. The little grubber kick by Mark Lee from the uh, rook position. He was impeded and he grabs the try. His second of the match. He's been involved in everything here. This is the build-up to it. He gets tackled short of the line. Mark Lee stands. Everybody that leads defence are waiting for the drop ball, I think, here. Kicks it forward, and he's definitely held back the penalty try under the sticks. Obstruction try by Lee, and of course, obstruction try awarded beneath the posts. Well, what a return to the first team. He's been out for two or three weeks, he was dropped by the coach, uh, Gary Jack, he's had plenty to prove. And uh, Martin Burkett's looking for what should be in normal conditions a comfortable two points. But in, with this rain and wind, who knows? It's the, the conversion then from Martin uh, Burkett, 21-12 for Leeds and 12 minutes remaining. As I said, Mark Lee's been involved in everything. He stands up here having been tackled. He notices the markers aren't there in front of him, only one man to beat. Just kicks it through, he's pulled back, and to get an, uh, an obstruction try, the referee has to be sure that he would have scored it, and I'm sure in that case he would have done. Gary Jack. Marsden electing to run himself from the active half-back position. Salford will not want to make any mistakes in this uh, period now, but uh, I like the way uh, Webster's come into the game very quickly, John. Yeah, fresh pair of legs coming on, he's strong and he wants to, you know, obviously to prove himself, put his mark on the game early on. O'Connor, good dummy by O'Connor, Peter Williams to Tauro, this is good rugby, he's got Martin alongside him, shrugs off to Williams again, O'Connor back to Ford, Ford the jink inside, what an excellent tackle. But it's still all Salford moving it about. Sean Brown back again, the dummy run round. Burkett to Critchen again, going for the corner, but Scales has him. Wonderful rugby from Salford. And let's praise that Leeds defence. They covered it twice on either wing. Excellent handling by the Salford back line. They get it to, once again wide to Critchley. Both teams here really defying the weather, playing exceptional football. Leeds, Stevens to the youngster, Scales. Joe, have you ever seen a, a tackle count like that? 160 in a game? No, if you'd have said that before the game, I would have said it'd be impossible. But that's, that's just a credit to Salford's pressure that they've placed on Leeds, forcing them to come up with so many tackles.
Gareth Stevens. all credit to this uh, scrum half he's never stopped trying coming down the middle trying to surprise open a gap and Alan Tate looking to try to pin Salford back in this 20 metre area in these uh, final minutes Gary Jack looks a tired man, Joe. Yeah, I think mentally and physically he's been watching his forwards playing very, very well. But Futil obviously will be delighted with the platform they set right from the start of the game. They followed it through, a little bit of a break at half time and then back into the same game plan. You think a player coach does substitute himself? There's a possible chance of it. I mean if he's feeling tired, it, you know, he's 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 um, he's got the the right players to, to come on him and replace him and it, it also gives him the chance to have a look at the closing minutes from the sideline Scott back on the field for Gary Mercer Three Brown continually opening out play to the flanks Martin Burkett playing for position just 10 minutes remaining here at the Willows sensible kick by, by Burkett Salford leading 21 points to 12. And I wonder what's uh, going through Ellery Hanley's mind there. Obviously, wanting Leeds now to move this ball out. They've got to do that. They've got to score very, very quickly. Scales. Rose. Still time for Leeds to steal this game. Gareth Stevens, Jim Fallon still gets the ball out to Scott, but he's isolated here on this wing. Tries to cut back inside, he manages to get the ball away. Fallon picked up by Mark Lee. Phil Ford. And Paul Farber, he might be sitting down, but uh, he's earned it. The man of the match. Sean Brown. To Richard Webster. He seems to like the rough and tumble, Joe. Well, it suits him, doesn't it? He must have been playing the same kind of game in rugby union. Obviously, with 13 Welsh caps, he knows exactly what it's all about. Play on, says uh, Mr Whitfield, again, good play by Wayne Reid, picked up by Sean Brown, these two half-backs been busy all afternoon. Tauro switches play, Lee, Webster again, Gary Jack, he's got uh, Williams on the outside and Phil Ford. Ran into trouble, I'm afraid. O'Connor. Leeds. Pick up the ball, James Lowe's. Congratulations, man of the match, Paul Forbes of Salford. So, Paul, all credit to Salford, they've really thrown the ball about in this game. Yes, they've had, uh, they played tremendous. I mean, look at the conditions, and uh, I don't think we've made too many angry matters at all, really. I mean, I know Leeds have made quite a few, but Salford have really stuck to the guns and uh, played brilliant to crowd of them. Leeds have certainly got the tackle count, though. Well over 100, isn't it? Yes, well, I mean, uh, they've made the mistakes, so obviously we've got the ball, so they've got to defend. I mean, at the end of the day, it's looking like a win for us, and I'm really, really pleased with it. Well played, Paul, thanks. Thank you. This is where the, uh, the referee awards have scrummed down. He must have shouted hell uh, uh, with Sam Irving having the ball, just slipped it to Alan Tate, but the referee must have called hell, pulled him back for the scrum. Martin Burkett. Number three, a late inclusion this morning, but certainly had a, a good game. Just five minutes remaining. Leeds still adding to that uh, tackle count. David Young. If Salford win, no one will relish victory more than that number eight. A reject from Headingley. The knock on from Richard Webster, but a good uh, pat there from his former Swansea teammate David Young. 
He had, you know, he was running to a strong defensive Leeds line there. Possibly took his eye off the ball, put it down. He'd be annoyed with himself for it though. Alan Tate doing well to retrieve that uh, ball coming quickly out of the scrum. Jim Fallon. Ran strongly on this right wing, the Leeds Jim Fallon. James Lowe's again and Stevens trying to open up play to Innes. Innes gets Iroh going and Iroh powering down there. The knock on again. Salford 78% possession and they've held it well too during these conditions, haven't they? That's right, and Salford are in the nice position now of, of having to force Leeds to play a little bit too much football to get back and try and snatch this game. Reed. Richard Webster taking the ball at first receiver. Phil Ford, another Welshman, a very experienced Welshman too, the Wales Rugby League wing and former Great Britain star. Mark Lee. Sean Brown still looking to open up play on that uh, on that right wing and Jarry Jack bursting in. Can he able to play the ball to himself? But well positioned by Alan Tate. He picked that little chip kick up by Jack Well. Neil Harmon running from deep and still manages to slip the ball away to James Lowes but uh, Lowes looking for support nobody coming well looked after by Burgess Stevens, one player who I think has kept coming on after the new job yes he's trying to bring his forwards on he's trying to make the plays but it's just a case that you know Leeds haven't had enough possession for him to work effectively Sean Brown sets Peter Williams in motion. Cries of Salford, Salford roaring around this uh, Willows ground. The fans may be wet, but the whole ones are happy. Burgess. Great Britain and the 21 player, number 13, Burgess. Just less than 60 seconds remaining, and Salford still looking for further points. A little bit of a dispute between uh, David Young and Gary Rose. No need for it, especially so late in the match. Yeah, a forward pass was given here. It is the last minute, as you say. Frustration there with the Leeds pack. Lead Stevens in possession. Jonathan Scales doing well, the former Gosforth Colts player. Rose, the one-handed pass to Richie Ayres. And a mistake picked up by uh, Hooker. Mark Lee, he's beavered about in midfield. Reed just can't get the ball away. Good cover tackle by Ian Scott, number 10. Webster. Well, he knows you can go yourself from acting half back if you wish. And Ian Scott is hurt. The long pass to Phil Ford. Got himself tangled up. complete the double over the Yorkshireman 23-18 they won in the league five weeks ago and now again today the first defeat of Leeds in five attempts in Regal Trophy matches 
and not only the crowd but I'm sure the coach Gary Jack who kept faith with the players despite the losses in recent weeks will be pleased Wayne Reid and uh, David Young and a sad exit there for Ian Scott an ankle injury at the final but I think they'll be looking for an easier tie in the third round draw on Monday 21-12 for Salford so Salford goes through and leads